hello guys and welcome to another retouching toolkit video in this one i'm going to focus on beginners and how to get started with the workflow panel because i think a workflow is the first thing that you th should think about when you're starting to learn to retouch and the previous videos that i did was more about functionality and what the tools can do so I wanted to go from uh, start to finish. Of course, I won't finish this image completely because it would take too long when I'm talking at the same time. So the first thing that you want to do and is click on folder setup. Let me click on it actually. Yep. And this creates a bunch of folders. And the first one is a markup layer. So if you want to mark up your image, which is a good habit of having. Um, I'm just using a regular brush. Set the flow 100%. I want to take care of small stuff like this. I might do something here, some spots. I think you get the idea. I would mark up the image while my eyes are fresh and I would do this as at uh, all the way zoomed out. I usually teach to zoom out because uh, that's the viewing distance that you're mostly gonna see the image. Okay, that's what the markup player is for create a mind map so you don't remember so you remember later when your eyes start to get tired of the image the next step is to fix texture and you do this with the healing and cloning tools and some variants of them and i'm going to show a neat trick here uh, that the toolkit has so I would stamp current and below in my repair folder. I would click on the content aware healing. And now what am I going to heal? There's a nice feature called I help. So the I help folders will exaggerate anything. So solar curve is a good one, for example, for hair that's sticking out on the background or for dust spots or an uneven backgrounds. I press J for, or actually I click here. J is the shortcut. So I'm now on content aware. I don't want to sample all layers. I just regular, if you click here, you get the correct settings. Then you change the brush size and you just uh, take care of the spots or the stuff that you want. And so, yeah, uh, for the skin, I might want to just check uh, with a few different help players here to see. Uh, yeah. Gonna boost contrast even further just to see the stuff. All I'm doing is dragging the points, so I'm still in the help players folder and I can use this. So let's just take care of a few more flaws. I usually teach not to zoom in unless you really have to. So start work zoomed out. And only zoom in if you really have to.
And here I have some smaller spots, so I would have to zoom in a little bit to make sure it's okay. But I press space bar to move around while I'm in brush mode. Just take care of the texture stuff. And these. I would spend more time maybe depending on the output. So this is just a test image for a, um, a model. It's not a beauty image, even though it has beauty elements. It's not a beauty image. Yes. So it's more of a portrait. I'd maybe take care of some small hairs. These won't show, but let's pretend that we're going to print this. So then I want to just take care of these as well. Another trick that I usually have is I press R to rotate. To and then B back to brush just or uh, J back to the healing brush actually just so I have a good angle to draw when I draw the stuff I want to heal And then let's, even though it's not going to show up because the hair is so dark and we might brighten it, but um, let's do a solar curve here again. Uh, J for the content that we're healing. Um, take care of a few of these stray hairs that goes against and that are very bright. And it does a very good job, the content aware, so I don't have to clone this, especially not on a R to rotate again. J for healing brush. Just take care of the texture. And if the if it looks good with this extreme help layer on, then it's gonna look good always. Basically, uh, there's um, yeah. Settings for my brush, by the way, is uh, high hardness. Um, Depends a little bit on the area that you're uh, healing. So if it's uh, out of focus area, I could change it to have a little bit softer edge, but usually you don't have to. Doesn't matter too much. Okay, turn this off, want some contrast again, let's fix a few more things in the skin. And here, Now you see I zoom in because I just want to take care of individual small hairs. So then I could turn on solar and use stay zoomed out, but I'm doing it for such a short period that it doesn't really matter. Um, okay. So why is it moving? 
that's not it. So now I've done my healing. Let's pretend I'm done. I would work a little bit more, but just to give you an insight into a beginner workflow that's really effective. Um, and if you want more details on um, heal clone uh, and the different variants and the content aware, there's plenty of information on the internet, but always start with this. Then you go into dodge and burn. And the thing here with the toolkit is it guides you into a proper workflow. So if I press uh, dodge and burn with help, if I right click on this one, it will put it in the correct folders. And then I can click on the eye up to get the luminosity. Uh, I can turn it negative. It's also very useful because the eye is pretty good at um, mid-tone range um, and stop moving my layers. Um, yeah, and then just start working. So the the dodge and burn just. You can click on this here and you get the presets uh, that, that are good. Like, just use them. And use R to rotate. Let's uh, take care of the necklines here then. So, uh, I'm pressing shortcuts a bit. So, R to rotate. Um, R, escape to get back into the original. J for healing brush, B for brush, Z to zoom, and then I have control zero to zoom out all the way, or control plus to zoom in. I have a bit of shortcuts, but like this, this is stuff that you will learn. So don't be afraid because I'm using shortcuts. And then B for brush, and that now. Since I clicked here, I know that I have the correct settings, but just make sure that you're painting with white at the low flow. So, uh, it's actually too strong. So, when it's an image like this that has very slight things that you need to do, you can lower the opacity of these because each dodge and burn layer is one uh, plus one exposure. So you could go to opacity here on the, the dodge layer and press, um, that's another shortcut, by the way. If you press V for the move tool on any layer, you can then use the numbers to set the opacity. So I would just press five. It gives me 50% on these. And then back to B for brush. And the reason I did this is now this is half a stop. It will make sense soon, I promise. And then necklines are taken care of in a matter of seconds. I'm even a little bit sloppy here, but... Like so. And then... Um, there's some brighter spots. Then I go to burn. And I want to keep the texture. I don't, I don't want to smooth it out like frequency separation type of... Uh, there's a bright spot here that I think is too strong. Fix that. And then there's some blotchiness here. I'm on burn, so I can go in and slightly take care of it. I want to go to dodge. There's tricks to um, um, uh, 
to switch between layers but uh, i want to keep this as beginner friends uh, friendly as possible so let's just And your goal is just to even out the transitions, not to take away stuff. So the reason is I don't heal uh, lines like this ever, because I think it's part of the image. So then I just go in with a small brush and I brighten the dark areas. And now it's going a bit slow, but So an area here, I can fix it quickly. And then I'd burn the brighter parts that's next to it, so it's more even. And if I want another, so now I know that these are just 50%, so they're plus 0.5. Um, but I can just right click on uh, dodge again it will put it in the correct folder I'll move it below here now this is one stop again just paint here because I want a little bit stronger effect. Sometimes you have to double up and you have to use several uh, layers, but it's just the way it works. Now that I'm zoomed in, I see something that I want to fix with the healing as well. It's easy to do. I go back to my stamp, I take the content aware, and there's an hair here I don't like. So, poof, gone. And I could take care of some small spots when I'm zoomed in as well uh, just to even out a little bit before I go into the dodge and burn it's really quick stuff uh, yeah. and then back to the dodge I wanna uh, make this transition here more even I think it's too dark here and a little bit too bright here but just very very slightly so I'll start uh, with the burn so I just burn this area a little bit And then the tiny, tiny highlight that I don't like, it's because it's uneven. Like so. And then I want to dodge. And now I know it's going to need a bit of a more heavy. So I'm using the regular one with the 100%. And just... Just a little bit here. Just even it out is the purpose, not to take it away. Okay, I'm gonna call that done because this is a quick retouch. Uh, there's a bunch of stuff. I'm rotating again. Just to show you. Hello, long. I want the lip line to be more defined. Not so I'm dodging a bit on the edge. Gonna then go back. Same here, I think this is too strong. I want to transition, but I want it smooth. So, 
same on this line here. Okay. Maybe there's some stuff up here. Zooming in and out is very powerful, guys. Don't ever forget to use it. You can even boost the contrast a bit if you want to see even more clearly. And um, now I want another burn layer. That's the full. I right click on burn uh, because this area here I think is too strong I want even texture or not a texture but even luminosity and I might brighten uh, her jaw just a little bit here Okay, and then just slight, slight burn here to, to even it just a little bit. Uh, even here, just even. Uh, and move around the image like when you see stuff. Um, some stuff is only visible at certain zoom levels. That's why I zoom out in and out a lot. Just to make sure that's right. Okay. I'm going to take away the help layers. And let's pretend I'm done. So we've done. We've taken, te taken care of texture. We've taken care of luminosity a little bit, and now the saturation is usually my next step. The easiest way to do this uh, is just right click saturate and desaturate with help. And then you use the same thing as you do with the dodge and burn. You have the dodge and burn tools here. So the difference is you can activate the help layers so you can see the luminous, uh, the saturation. So because of what I did with the nose here, I can see that there is a difference. So darker means is desaturated. So B for brush. I have a low flow. I same settings as before. I just even this out ever so slightly. You have to be careful here, turn it on and off, because highlights like this, you don't want to saturate. You want to keep it, but just like where I use dodge and burn to even it out. Um, there's definitely an area here that needs saturation. Maybe not even that much. Come on, undo. Yeah, like so. Um, even here in the line that I fixed, uh, I can see that I need to desaturate this part here to make it not stick out. I think that's enough for maybe a spot here. Uh, 
too much again. Okay. I hope you're following along so far. I'm using help players. If you miss a step, just rewind, watch it again. Uh, so this is the way you work. Uh, I can see that I want more saturation here. Uh, for example, then I would just ever so slightly. Uh, actually, I'll use this method because I think it's cool. I press saturate here, the blank layer. Uh, then you need one of the colors needs to be fully saturated and one needs to be no saturation. And when you paint now, let's increase flow just to show the effect. When you paint with the saturated color, you're sat you're saturating. When you paint with the desaturating, you're you're desaturating. So let's undo this. So what I wanted to do now is at the low flow, just go in here and add a little bit of saturation. That's way too strong. I'm using shortcuts again. I pressed V for opacity. I'm, I'm sorry if it's, this is just the way I work. I, I press stuff. Okay, so I think that looks better, but it's too strong. So, so then I take care of the different saturation areas. Uh, why is trying to move stuff? It's a luminosity issue as well, but okay. Doesn't matter for this one. So then after, uh, somehow I drag this in out of order. So the workflow, I'll go through it from top to bottom very soon. So then color corrections is adjustment layers, basically. So to limit my selection from the start, I usually just do a rough area with a lasso tool. And then I use curves a lot when I do my color corrections. Uh, and if there was any specific area that I wanted to fix, I'd, I'd target that specific area. Again, this is not a beauty image, so there's lots of things I would do to this image, but um, this is about the workflow, not about the image. Okay, so I, I just used the channels. I think it has too much green. Uh, I'm going to use my shortcut again for opacity because I think 100% uh, is very hard to work with with curves. So I press V. Uh, I need to be V and actually 1, 10%. That's enough for me on this one. And I can drag away green a little bit. And then on the red, I want to just even it a little bit. And I want to add a little bit of yellow. Maybe actually keep the reds. Yeah. So when I'm happy with the correction, I flip it on and off to see what I did. And I can see that I changed. I'm just going to boost the brightness a little bit. I, I want it a little bit brighter. Don't worry if you don't understand what I'm doing with the adjustment layers or when I'm doing the shortcuts. This is about the workflow. So. 
keep that in mind. Uh, Alt delete puts the foreground color on the mask. I have the mask selected. Control delete or similar on like Alt is option on Mac. Control is still control, I think, if I remember correctly. So I, I make it black. I go back to my brush. I can use a little bit higher flow. Uh, I changed it to 10. And I paint it in. And that's how I approach my color corrections in this particular image. I don't have to care too much because I'm not affecting the whites. So I can paint really close to the edge. Maybe something like this. Makes it more even. Um, another color correction you can do as part of the toolkit since very long time ago and it's very very advanced is to create a gradient map so you click on gradient map maker and then you have to decide on what's good skin tone first make sure that you have a sample size that's relative to your image so on this one it's a big file so 31 is probably good i click here I look at this and I click here and what I'm looking at mostly is this because I want to have a sort of darker tone that I like. I click OK and then I want some sort of mid tone and now I'm looking for then maybe some good Yeah, it looks okay. And then a highlight. I don't have any particularly good highlights in the body. So I'm going to use one that I like from the face. So you can use as many sample points as you want. But then I click cancel and I got a gradient map. It's fully filled from the beginning. Just so you can see that you did it correctly. If you want to tweak it. But just invert it, brush, low flow again, and you can then paint it to even out skin texture a little bit. Like if there's redness in certain areas, it would take care of it. Uh, I don't recommend using gradient maps if you're an, if, if it's a beauty image or like. Here I was very careful because this is part of the makeup. I don't want to put the same colors, but I'm just evening it out a little bit now. So Okay. That's part of my color corrections. Uh, grading I'm not going to go into because that's more creative stuff. But that's the workflow. Uh, if you have a big screen or if you have two screens, the two up vertical is very nice. Just puts um, uh, the same image side by side. So if you're working zoomed in, you can still see what's happening on the big one or the zoomed out one, because this is what we see. So if I work here, uh, let's see it. and then I can drag this to a different screen because I have another screen if I want to. Uh, and you can work on either of the images. Uh, yeah. And as for like help players, these are the, the main I help players that you get from here is. Uh, useful to, to judge your image so threshold you'll just see like okay so where's my brightest parts of the image is down here and then it goes up here and then let's let's see where the brightest parts on the skin are see when they start to 
it's here as they should be. Yeah, and then a bright spot here, but that's fine because we're already on the opposite. You can go see where my darker parts, it's in there. That's the threshold layer. Contrast is just the boost contrast. If you want to see what you're doing. Solar is very good for, for hair and content aware stuff. Because then you can see that you're not messing things up. Negative is very good because the eye is uh, very good at seeing um, bright parts. Like I can see almost all the way to true white, but I can't see all the way to true black. Like it, it depends a bit how you have your setup. But for me, I flip negative on when I'm working on uh, with Dodge and Burn a lot. And then in combination with luminosity. So then I, I'd see. I just then have to think the opposite. So for example, if I just rotate here to fix this, I go back to my uh, dodge because we're in the opposite mode now I have to remember this I press my brush to have the... so when I paint now in the negative mode and these are also in the dodge and burn folders you don't have to use them up here you can use them down here in the dodge and burn folders so negative luminosity you can give a boost contrast now, when I paint with dodge, it's going to burn. So, because I mean, my help player inverts everything. But it helps me see certain things that I wouldn't see otherwise. So, uh, if I want to darken something, then I use dodge. If I want to lighten something, I use burn. Okay? So... Just want to take care of this small stuff here a little bit. Um, I'm going sloppy, but it's. And this was too much. Oh, I can fix it. Okay. Control zero to zoom out. And. We can deactivate the help layers from our dodge and burn. I know it looks like there's so many folders and it's hard to follow along, but it just stick around for just a second more. I'll show you. If you want to see what your saturation is in the image, using these two together is very good. It's also in the selective saturation if you use this. Um, so this is because I use the gradient map on top. So um, uh, I would then instead use these two. And then, uh, yeah, I would fix the blotchiness here a little bit with the saturation. Okay. That's it. That's a good workflow. Honestly. And that's the workflow you should have. You should use help layers. Because they help you a lot. Because your eye is not good. <laughs> a good retoucher has a better eye. But it's still not good. Help, use help layers. So. First. Repair. Repair is texture. It might be taking stuff from other images. It might be in your compositing and whatever. But it's still, you always start with the re repair. Then you take care of the uh, luminosity, which is the perceived brightness with dodge and burn. Everyone has heard of these terms. 
just because this looks advanced because it's folders it's not more advanced than anything else if you prefer the gray layer method i'm not gonna go into it but you can just right click here and it puts it in the dodge and burn folders like even if i was up here doing color grading or and i see an issue and i want to fix it with the uh, gray soft light i right click and it puts it in the correct folder so this guides you and like when you have lots and lots of layers and folders having this option to right click and put stuff in the correct order is very time saving and it makes sure that you follow a good workflow so it's uh, yep yeah. okay so after the luminosity then i take care of saturation this is my method though so you don't have to you can you can take care of saturation with color corrections i just prefer to do it as a separate step because the biggest issue that you get with dodge and burn is saturation and the biggest issue that i see that people have on on uh, when uh, they ask me for critique is saturation so i prefer to have it as a separate step and then uh, with the help players that i just deleted but, um and then color correction is just your preferred adjustment layer and then you paint it in and then you confirm with your markup that you did what you did uh that you intended to and we haven't done this one it's just an example and then i'm done that's the workflow the folders were created for me i click on right click on the buttons it puts it in the correct order i can click on the tools here gives it the proper settings this is content aware just healing patch tool clone and a bigger clone so the difference between this one and this one is just size still dodge and burn uh, and these are just shortcuts to the color corrections uh, but uh, It will uh, yeah. that's it. It's really that simple. So then the more advanced stuff is when you get into uh like when you wanna try and mix in all these fancy techniques to smooth things out and do things automatically and have one button click solutions and that's not real retouching you're ruining your images don't do it only do it after you learn this start with this start to learn to work in a, a structured manner from the bottom up um and then I get asked what I do with my image afterwards. Yeah, I clean it up before I save it. There's a cool feature in Toolkit called Remove Identical Pixels. Since I doubled my file size when I did the stamp here, and I was using the Content Aware Healing, I can click on Delete Identical Pixels. So I clean up my document. give it a second because it's a medium format file yeah and now if i hold down alt and click on a layer i can see only that layer this is what it kept that's what i was healing that's what it's fixing and then i can remove help layers you can see it took away the help layers here and here and here I can remove my markup if I want to and then I save this image and I say I'm I'm done with the retouch but no you also have a target so uh, 
what you want to do is after you saved you you duplicate it you don't want to do anything else uh to your image until after you duplicate because otherwise you risk uh, not having this because this i can go back to this if a client is not happy with something or whatever um but anyway so duplicate merged gives you a new copy of your image here and now i can add uh sharpen i do selective sharpen only uh, almost always uh, i always add grain and grain in toolkit is really easy you just press grain and you can see the grain if you want it it's saying blur because that's the best grain but uh, So let's undo and go back to this. Uh, so then also, if you want to create a um, web-sized image for, you would do the same again. You wouldn't sharpen before unless there's texture problems, but so then I say resize to long edge, and this is a good size for most online images. Uh, so I'm just going to click OK. And this is now my web, uh, web version. I don't think it needs sharpening anything, uh, so I'm not going to do it. But I, I like grains, so I'm going to add grain. And I can double click here to go and see the settings and I can boost it up and make it even bigger. This is way too much, but I like grain, so let's use it. Okay. And not R. Z. And then uh on the document tab here again i make sure to set copyright on my image and i had english keyboard activated doesn't matter and then save as jpeg and the settings here is you want to have uh convert to srgb and you want to uh, uncheck embed color profile because most websites when you upload take away the color profile um, unless you know that the target has a browser or has uh, or the platform where you're gonna put it respects that there is a color profile in the image you always want to uncheck it and i i find around 70 is good and then i save the image and then i would upload it to uh, whatever I wanted. So as you can see, it's not that advanced. Uh, I get a bunch of different images here. And that's, that's the purpose of the whole thing. I don't risk uh, overwriting my original retouch. There's lots more in the workflow and the toolkit, but that's the basics of it. You use your folder setup, you use your repair tools, you dodge and burn. Uh, if you want to do saturation separately, it's optional, but that's what I recommend. Uh, then you do your color corrections, and at the top you have your grading. And the way the uh, uh, tool is, is set up is that if you have a grading from another image, let's say this is part of a series, then you can have it active at the top here because uh, none of the tools will sample from anything that's above. And that's the clever part about it is that you can use help layers for every tool. Okay. 
if you have any questions please feel free to ask uh, I'm sorry if I press keyboard stuff and move around a bit quickly, but just rewatch it. Uh, it's it's hard for me to not use like when my brain says brush, I just press B. So uh, yeah, thank you for watching, and I catch you soon. Bye bye.